So for the past three days, I've been gathering data on IC410, also known as the Tadpole Nebula. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to West Virginia Astronomy. My name is Jonathan. Uh, if you guys have followed the channel, you've probably noticed I've been using the Red Cat 51 a lot lately, but I really uh, kind of missed the Zenith Star 81, so I kind of pulled that thing back out, and yeah, I wanted to get a really good picture of the Tadpole Nebula. It is um, a real dusty emission nebula in the constellation Auriga, and it's one of my favorite targets and the reason why is that it's got really dark dusty areas with a lot of bright highlights and the way that the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen 3 are in this nebula you can really use this l extreme filter to really isolate and separate those two colors and make those different colors stand out against the uh the background really good so i actually got my wi-fi extender working again so no worries there everything is back to normal and I've actually had four clear nights in a row. The first one didn't go too good. Um, I had forgotten how long it takes for my telescope to kind of acclimate to the outside temperature, so I had to waste a bunch of subs at the beginning. But other than that, I mean, I've gotten a really strong signal, and yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you guys. I did three different stacks on the computer. Everything I gathered the first night, the second stack is everything I gathered both nights and the third stack is from all three nights so should be a pretty fun comparison guys and if you uh, ever wondered how much integration time you actually need on a target um, this video might actually be something you might be interested in so stick around join me as we go process an image guys here we are on the computer I got my coffee I got everything ready to go and I am going to go ahead and start by showing you uh, when you do multiple nights of imaging the same target as you get done each night you want to come and unload your data into the computer and the way I found it to be the most convenient is to just label them uh, I have night one here night two and night three if you go into each folder here, I have I have the darks labeled, dark flats, flats, and lights. There's no confusion. Um, it's very easy to forget which flats go with which night and you know all that. So it's just best practice to keep everything organized like this. Um, I have an external hard drive that I keep everything saved on. So before I started doing that, it, everything was always a jumbled mess on my computer. But anyway, we're gonna go in here and open up Photoshop and I have one file with only 10 frames stacked and I have a second file with 27 frames stacked and then I have a third file with 93 frames stacked. Now I did somehow I managed to rotate my camera on the third night of imaging so I'm not really sure how that happened but it's okay because all the data is right here in the middle I can just crop that out I'm not gonna do that right now because I have my HA data here that I want to line back up with that so I'm not really gonna crop it yet but you can see the HA data here and man this is why I love this target I mean just look at that signal that is crazy that's why they call it the tadpole nebula but you can see the really dark, dusty stuff, and there's all this dust around here. Um, all this dust over here. Yeah, I just picked up a really good signal, and there's not a whole lot of noise, you can see. Um, this hasn't been 
the background levels haven't been adjusted or anything so these three files are straight out of Astro Pixel Processor. I did do an auto stretch on them just to kind of speed up the video here. But so what I'm going to do now, I am just going to stretch each one of these images until I can't stretch them any longer. And we'll kind of zoom in and look at the details and the different levels of noise and kind of compare the three. So. I'll fast forward the video so you guys don't really have to sit through this. Um, I will post the raw data in a Dropbox. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to download these files and process them yourself. Uh, feel free to do so. Tag me in it so I can uh, I can check it out. I'm just going to do levels and curves back and forth um, until I have these all three of these stretched to where I want them. So. Okay, so now we have all three of them stretched to the limit. Okay, nothing else has been done to these, just that, and we're just going to zoom in here. We'll pull these down off of here so we can compare these side by side here. Okay, here we are with a side-by-side -side comparison and right away you can see in The 10 frames we have here. I mean there is a ton of color noise. I mean That's basically what all these blue and green little specks are and this was 10 300 second exposures and we move along to the 27 frames you can see the color noise gets better um, it's still kind of getting lost in the noise here um, all these pixels um, that would be very hard to kind of work with and processing there and you can see on the first one it just kind of almost gets completely lost in the noise when you zoom in Let's see here and yeah, so when you zoom in you can see these details here get kind of lost and we move on to the 93 frames here and it is just very clean you can see the highlights really popping in this one um, the stars are a lot brighter in this than these here you can see a lot of artifacts around the stars and just little pixels that when you kind of do star reduction uh, those little artifacts will be left over um, it's not so bad in this one. You can see the stars are a lot rounder. Uh, they're cleaned up a little bit. And then in this one, they're a lot cleaner. Uh, the color noise is still still pretty apparent in this this one in the 93. But yeah, I mean, you can. it's an obvious big difference. And the thing you have to remember with integration time and how much you need um, your signal to noise ratio is improved by the square root so there is diminishing returns eventually you will get to a point where adding more data is not really going to help your image it's just going to add more noise and so generally I like to if if I can get 50 exposures to stack that's a goal that I shoot for or you know I have at least 75 to stack instead of doing like 60 um, I might as well just do 50 instead because you're not going to get a really better signal until you start reaching that basically I just kind of wanted to show you guys really how much difference having more integration time really makes you could still come up with a great image out of this stack of 10 here um, but me, I've gotten to the point where that's just too much noise for me to deal with and I benefit a lot more if I just wait and stack it when I have a little more data to play with. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It's not going to be a full in-depth tutorial. I just kind of wanted to point this out and show you how excited I was to see this data and man, it's just, it's very exciting. Probably not going to mess with the 
the 10 stack or the 27 stack. I just kind of wanted to do that for the video. I am going to process the 93 together and I'm going to add the HA luminous layer, all that on there. So like I said, I'll leave a link for these files in the description below so you guys can kind of play around on them and yeah, hopefully this helps somebody and hopefully you kind of understand signal to noise ratio a little better. I'm not the best at explaining it, but basically that's how it works is that the more integration time isn't always the best if it's going to have diminishing returns. So you kind of got to do some homework and figure out kind of where that sweet spot is. And that's pretty much it for this. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, uh, I'd appreciate a like, a comment, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, uh, maybe consider doing that. I do videos all about astrophotography, uh, image processing videos, just different things I got going on in the backyard, and hopefully somebody can get something out of these, and I like making the videos, so it's, it's a win-win for everybody. So, yeah, guys, uh, see you in the next one. Peace.